Welcome to the History Unicorn Paranormal, where we delve into the mysterious and unexplained. In this video, we'll explore one of America's most enduring legends, the story of a mysterious creature that roams the rural backroads of Elkhorn, Wisconsin. The legend of the Beast of Bray Road has been passed down through the decades, with sightings and accounts of the creature dating back to the 1930s. Despite years of investigations, the truth behind the legend remains shrouded in mystery and intrigue. In this video, we'll explore the history, legends, theories, investigations, and cultural impact of the Beast of Bray Road. We'll examine the numerous sightings and accounts of the creature, and the various explanations and theories that have been put forward over the years. The Beast of Bray Road has been part of Wisconsin's folklore for decades. We'll delve into the history of the legend and explore its cultural and historical context. The earliest recorded sighting of the Beast of Bray Road dates back to 1936, when Mark Shackleman reported seeing a large wolf-like creature near Delavan, Wisconsin. However, it wasn't until the late 1980s and early 1990s that the legend of the Beast of Bray Road really took off, with numerous sightings and reports of the creature coming in from around the small town of Elkhorn, Wisconsin. One of the most famous sightings occurred in 1989 when a woman named Lori and Drizzy reported seeing a large, hairy creature on two legs that resembled a werewolf or a Bigfoot. How did all of this get started? What was the catalyst for the phenomena that became the Beast of Bray Road? The modern fascination with this dogman creature began in late December of 1991 when Linda Godfrey was still a new staff reporter at a small local publication, The Walworth County Week. She stated in her book, The Beast of Bray Road, telling Wisconsin's werewolf that she received a tip from another freelance journalist of a rumor surrounding a wolf-like creature stalking the cornfield surrounding Elkhorn. Godfrey was understandably skeptical of the story and states that she laughed out loud, but it was a slow period during the news cycle and she promised this freelancer she'd look into the reports. Thus began a multi-decade journey into cryptids, cryptozoology, and led to her coining the moniker, the Beast of Bray Road. While the Beast of Bray Road is a relatively new legend, the underlying mythos surrounding dogmen and werewolves have been around for millennia. Every country has their own version of the werewolf legend, including Native American tribes in the United States. In addition to the Native American legends, the region has a rich tradition of German and Scandinavian folklore, which includes stories of shape-shifting creatures and werewolves. These cultural influences help to shape the legend of the Beast of Bray Road and to create create a rich mythos around the creature. Eyewitness accounts of Wisconsin's dogman have varied widely over the years, with some describing the creature as a large bipedal werewolf, while others have reported it as a more traditional wolf-like animal. Some accounts suggest that the creature is aggressive and predatory, while others have described it as being more shy and elusive. Over time, the creature's appearance and behavior seems to have evolved in response to changing cultural and environmental factors, as well as the influence of other popular monsters and cryptids. The legend of the the Beast of Bray Road is deeply rooted in a combination of rich folkloric traditions, particularly Native American, German, and Scandinavian. This melding of folklore has given the Beast of Bray Road a unique layering of cultural significance and attributes. These influences are most notably seen in the description of this creature's appearance, behavior, and the various explanations offered for its existence. As we've discussed, the legend of the Beast of Bray Road is steeped in a combination of Native American and European folklore. This combination of traditions can make understanding exactly what the beast is and where it came from a little more muddy. Let's dig a little deeper into these theories and see which one fits, based on eyewitness accounts and other evidence. The theory surrounding the Beast of Bray Road falls into four basic categories. A werewolf shapeshifter, Bigfoot or Sasquatch, an undiscovered animal or dogman, and finally, a supernatural being. The most popular of these theories is that of a werewolf or shapeshifter, where the beast has the ability to transform from animal to human, or vice versa. This theory is based on both Native American and European traditions, however, I do have a hard time with this theory. None of the witness accounts that I've studied has a human counterpart to the Beast of Bray Road. While this isn't conclusive evidence against this theory, the fact that no human has been suspected of being the Beast of Bray Road makes this theory a little harder to take 
take seriously. The next most popular theory surrounding this creature is the beast is a misidentified Bigfoot or Sasquatch. While this could be possible because Wisconsin does have a history of Bigfoot sightings, I tried to avoid solving one mystery by creating another one. Again, this theory is just as valid as the first one, but I still see a few holes in this suggestion. The biggest problem I have with this theory is the size difference between a Sasquatch and the Beast of Bray Road. While we'll get into this a little later in the video, the beast is much smaller than the hulking Bigfoot. The third theory I would like to discuss is that of a misidentified or undiscovered predatory animal, such as a wolf or bear hybrid. This is the most logical scientific theory because hybridization in the wild has become more prevalent. Some great examples of this are the koi wolf and the pizzly or growler. If you are unfamiliar with these hybrids, a koi wolf is the offspring of a wolf and a coyote, while a pizzly and growler are a combination of grizzly bear and polar bear, depending on which bear is the mother and which is the father. While Wisconsin doesn't have grizzly or polar bears, the area does have black bears, wolves, and coyotes. Wolves are less common in southern Wisconsin, but there are still documented encounters with these animals in the Elkhorn area. The likelihood of a new hybrid hybrid or undiscovered predator is higher than you might think. With deforestation and global warming, animals have been forced to adapt and change their hunting ranges. A crossbreeding of compatible species isn't as outlandish as some believe. The last theory I would like to delve into is that of a supernatural creature sent to punish the area population for one reason or another. While this theory is harder for some to swallow than others, there is folkloric and mythological evidence to support this type of entity. Hellhounds, for example, are are connected to many European and some Native American traditions where they are usually guardians of sacred places. I don't have as much knowledge when it comes to this type of myth as others. One of the main reasons, I have never had the urge to desecrate a sacred place and neither has anyone I've been associated with. I believe that we all have a stupidity resume usually filled in during our teenage and young adult years. My stupidity resume, while quite full, doesn't have desecration of anything listed on it. Another Another reason this theory isn't completely out of the realm of possibility is the feeling of fear and dread felt by some eyewitnesses. One eyewitness even claims to have heard a rudimentary type of language from the beast. Whichever theory you lean towards, there's no mistaking the local and cultural significance for the people of Wisconsin, particularly those living in and around the town of Elkhorn. Just like any community, many see this legend as a source of pride and fascination, representing the rich cultural history of the region. On the other hand, some see it as a symbol of fear and mystery, not to mention a reminder of the dangers that lurk in the darkness. The legend has also become a popular tourist attraction, with many people flocking to the area in search of the creature. As we've discussed, the origins and symbolism of the Beast of Bray Road are complex and multifaceted. Some believe the creature is a symbol of punishment and terror, while others see the beast as a symbol of the region's natural beauty and power. The latter believe the beast represents the untamed wilderness and the mysterious forces that lie within, while still others view this creature as a representation of human fear and anxiety. There's no right answer here, but it's interesting how one legendary creature can represent so many opposing viewpoints. Even more interesting is that the Beast of Bray Road has been compared to other cryptids and mythological creatures, including the aforementioned werewolf and Bigfoot, but even this chupacabra has been associated with the beast. Some believe that the creature is part of a larger network of cryptids, all of which share a similar origin or purpose. Others see it as a unique and distinct creature with its own set of powers and abilities. Regardless of its origin, the Beast of Bray Road has become a symbol of the enduring power of mythology and legend, representing the deep-seated human need for mystery and magic in our lives. So far in this video, I've only been discussing theories in the legend itself, but where is the evidence? As with most cryptid creatures, the physical evidence is pretty thin, but there are numerous eyewitnesses that have come forward through the years. These first-hand accounts provide a vivid and compelling picture of the creature and its impact on those who have seen it. While eyewitness information is extremely valuable, it's also important to approach these accounts with a critical eye. I'm only going to cover some of the eyewitness accounts due to time constraints. 
constraints. This video is already going to be long enough. There's no way I could analyze every single eyewitness account in one video. It would make this video longer than my compilation videos. I'll hit on the eyewitness accounts that seem to drive the legend forward, or ones that add relevant information to support or debunk theories surrounding the Beast of Bray Road. I want to make a quick disclaimer. The list of eyewitnesses are in the order they were reported, not in the order that they happened. Some witnesses took years, even decades, before they reported their encounter. I put a complete chronological timeline in the description, according to Linda S. Godfrey in her book, The Beast of Bray Road, Tailing Wisconsin's Werewolf. Enough stalling, let's get into the encounters. The encounter that started it all was reported by a young lady named Lori Andrezzi. In the fall of 1989, she left her job as the manager of an Elkhorn Lodge called the Jury Room at 1.30 in the morning. She was making her way down the lonely Bray Road when she noticed an animal on the side of the road. When she first sighted the creature, its back was facing her, which gave her a good view of its pointed ears. As she continued to drive forward, she got a good view of the creature from the front. The animal was kneeling with roadkill clasped in its claws, as if she had just interrupted the beast meal. While it's strange for an animal to eat like a human, what unnerved Lori was when her headlights hit the animal and caught its eye shine. It didn't run away, but turned and stared at her. This shows the creature had lost its fear of humans. When asked, Lori described the creature as having dark brownish gray fur, standing approximately five foot seven, and weighed about 150 pounds. After her encounter, Lori was curious about what she saw. She went to the library and found a book describing a werewolf and the illustration matched what she encountered. Later, Linda Godfrey created the sketch you've been seeing on the screen from Lori's physical description and details of her encounter. The next reported sighting came from Lori and Treacy's friend, Doris Gibson, whose encounter occurred on October 31st, 1991, which is fitting considering the subject matter. Doris stated she was driving down Bray Road when her tire lifted off the ground, like she'd hit a small animal or something. She stopped and got out to inspect the damage and see what she hit. She didn't immediately spot anything, so she went around the back of her vehicle and encountered this thing running towards her. She knew it wasn't a normal animal because it was bigger than her. Instantly, she made a mad dash for her door and made it back inside her vehicle moments before the creature lifted the rear of her car. Doris did what any self-respecting lone female on a dark and desolate road would do. She gunned it. She sped off away from the threat, which I can't blame her for. She recounted the creature had a big hairy chest, and while she didn't get a good look at its lower half, she believed that it was running on two legs based on the sound of its feet hitting the road as it ran toward her. Doris stated she felt as if she was being hunted. She believed that if the creature had caught her, she would have been its next meal. This wasn't the last encounter Doris had with the beast. Later that evening, she picked up a friend from a party. As Doris was driving, her friend noticed the same creature and got Doris's attention. The memory of the earlier encounter was still fresh in her mind. Doris stomped on the gas. She stated she didn't want a repeat of her first experience. When Doris got home, she inspected her vehicle and found what she described as claw marks on the back and trunk of her car. During the interview with Linda Godfrey, Doris described the beast as having brown, long, straight hair and its size was larger than a German Shepherd. This description is interesting because it characterizes a creature that is larger and more muscular than Laura Andrezzi's encounter. Additionally, unlike Lori, Doris believed the creature was an animal and not a werewolf. In the same interview with Linda Godfrey, Doris described the beast as one of God's mistakes. While Lori and Doris's encounters are what started the modern fascination with the Beast of Bray Road, they're not the first to encounter the Beast. That unlucky title goes to Mark Shackleman, who encountered a similar creature decades before in 1936. Mark Shackleman was working at St. Coletta, a Catholic convent located about two miles east of Jefferson, Wisconsin, in the 1930s as a night watchman. For my history buffs, this is the same place that the infamous Joe Kennedy sent his daughter Rosemary Kennedy after her lumbotomy for mild retardation in 1941. While this isn't relevant to Mark's encounters, it's an interesting Easter egg of sorts. Now back to the encounters. Mark states that he saw this creature on two separate occasions, both at midnight and both times on the grounds of St. Coletta. The first encounter was pretty uneventful. Mark had come upon a strange creature kneeling atop a Native American 
American burial mound. He stated that this creature was upright and clawing at the ground. When the beast noticed Mark approaching, it fled the scene. The next day, he returned to the scene and found rake marks in the ground. Mark described the marks as having three claws, with the thumb and little finger looking shriveled or noticeably shorter. The next night, Mark Shackleman went back to the same mound armed with a flashlight to use as a club. He found the same creature again, but it didn't run this time. Instead, the beast stood up and faced the elder Shackleman, staring him in the eye as if in challenge, and let out a three-syllable gadar or growl. Mark stated the sound was low and mean, but also sounded like a neo-human language. Mark Shackleman told his son that the creature stood approximately six feet tall and was covered in dark or black hair, and eyes that looked into him. One notable part of the beast's description was the odor it gave off. Mark stated it smelled like long dead meat. He also said the hair on the back of his neck stood up when he heard the growl and he felt like the creature had the power to kill if so desired. Mark stated when he began to pray, the creature sneered at him and slowly walked away. That was the last time he saw the creature. Years later, Joe Shackleman created this sketch of the creature based on his father's description. Notice the muscular humanoid features with three long claws on its feet and hands. Its hands seem to hang almost human-like as if the creature is ready to claw something. The head has a pronounced forward pointing muzzle, prominent fangs, and pointed ears near the top of its head, and the body is covered in scraggly fur. Besides the physical description, Joe later asked his father if he thought the beast was an animal or something else. Mark stated he thought the creature came straight from hell. The elder Shackleman wondered if his prayers sent the creature back, at least for a short period of time. The last encounters we'll discuss is that of Tom Bruchetta and his friends Chris Maxwell and Scott Freeman. Tom's first encounter happened on a foggy night in August 1992 when Tom and Chris left a wedding reception and headed to Jellystone Campground near Fort Atkinson, where Chris was staying. During their drive down Highway 106, Tom had to pull over because he thought he'd hit a mailbox. What the friends found wasn't a mailbox, it was a large hairy creature reaching towards them. The car windows were open to let in the summer breeze and the boys caught a foul odor wafting from the unknown animal. After Tom dropped Chris off, he came upon a couple patrol patrol officers. He stopped and told them about the creature he'd encountered along the road. In addition to speaking to the officers, Tom called the sheriff's department and spoke to Lieutenant Lentz when he arrived home. The sheriff's department received another report of a large object, possibly a bear, laying in the ditch along Highway 106 and in. A squad car was dispatched to the location, but the deputies found nothing. According to the sheriff's department, the two incidents were approximately seven miles apart. In a subsequent interview with Linda Godfrey, Tom didn't mention the mailbox theory. He instead stated that he saw an enormous hand stick out, reach toward his car in the fog. This is when he slowed down to avoid the obstacle. He described the creature as large with its lower chest belly region reaching the top of his windows. He described the color as a whitish gray with black streaks and very hairy. Tom went on to describe the creature as having large legs and hairy feet with odd shaped long arms. During his interview, Tom repeated that he detected a foul odor coming from the creature and also mentioned that it attacked his car. This wouldn't be the last encounter Tom had with the Beast of Bray Road. Approximately two months later in October, Tom was driving down the same highway, except it was dusk this time and he was with his friend Scott Freeman. This time, the creature was walking along the side of a cornfield about 20 feet off the road. The corn was approximately six feet tall and the creature's head and shoulders were above the stalk. Tom believed that the creature didn't notice the teens at first, but when it did, it turned and stared them down, snickering in challenge. Both Tom and Scott were scared, but Tom was able to get a better look at the creature. He described it as having dog-like legs with muscular thighs and overall an exceptionally large animal. This time, Tom and Scott described the creature's coloring as dark instead of the silver Tom originally reported. Tom also stated that the creature turned and entered the cornfield, lifting its leg over something. When asked, Tom didn't remember seeing a tail. We've only covered a small fraction of the sightings of the Beast of Bray Road. While there are many similarities with this creature, there are also some differences. Many witnesses report seeing the creature at night or dusk, but there are others we didn't cover that report daylight sightings. The coloring of this creature also seems to shift from a dark or dark brown all the way to a silver gray. One glaring difference is the physical 
physical description by some of the observers. While a majority of the eyewitnesses describe an upright bipedal creature, there are others that have described the beast as a large wolf or dog-like animal walking on all fours. I wonder if they're describing the same creature or if there are multiple in the region. These differences may also reflect the changing environmental factors that have influenced the legend over time, as well as the individual experiences and perceptions of the witnesses. Encountering the Beast of Bray Road can be a traumatic and unsettling experience for eyewitnesses, leaving a lasting impact on their psychological and emotional well-being. Many eyewitnesses report feeling intense fear and anxiety during the encounters with a creature, with some experiencing ongoing nightmares or other psychological symptoms in the aftermath. Others may feel a sense of awe or wonder after seeing such a rare and mysterious creature. The emotional and psychological impact of these sightings is a fascinating area of study and can help shed light on the enduring power of mythology and legend in our lives. There are many theories and explanations surrounding the existence of the Beast of Bray Road. Some believe that it's a type of undiscovered predator, others suggest it may be a type of Bigfoot or Sasquatch, while still others believe that it's a type of shapeshifter or supernatural being. Some theories even propose that the creature is a type of hybrid or mutated animal created through genetic engineering or b other means. Each theory surrounding the Beast of Bray Road has its own set of implications and possibilities. For example, if the creature is a type of discovered predator, it could have significant ecological implications, potentially affecting the balance of the local ecosystem. If it's a type of hybrid animal, it could raise ethical questions around genetic engineering and animal welfare. And if it's a type of supernatural being, it could challenge our understanding of the laws of nature and the limits of human knowledge. There have been many investigations into the beast of Bray Road. Unfortunately, physical evidence has been very hard to come by. While there have been reports of tracks to my knowledge, there's never been casts made of those tracks. For example, Mark Shackleman found raking marks in the Native American burial ground, but he didn't make a cast of the prints. Other witnesses have also found tracks, but didn't preserve them. In addition to tracks, at least two witnesses claimed the beast left claw or scratch marks on their car. For example, both Doris Gibson and Tom Brichetta reported damage to their cars after their encounters with the beast. While physical evidence might be slim, eyewitness accounts of the creature are plentiful. As stated before, these accounts are extremely valuable. However, this type of evidence needs to undergo more scientific rigor due to the likelihood of misidentification or unreliable memories. We've only covered a fraction of all the eyewitness accounts that have been reported over the years. Some of the eyewitnesses we didn't cover have reported a Sasquatch-like creature. One interesting account from Scott Bray reported a creature that resembled a large black dog. One major issue with the eyewitness accounts is that none of the witnesses were looking for the creature. How is this an issue, you ask? Scientifically speaking, these accounts can't be replicated. According to Linda Godfrey, the Beast of Bray Road has never been encountered during a field investigation. While there is significant eyewitness evidence supporting the existence of the Beast of Bray Road, there are also many alternative explanations and potential hoaxes to consider. For example, some sightings of the creature may be misidentification of known animals, such as large dogs or wolves. Others may be hoaxes or elaborate pranks. It's important to consider all possible explanations and weigh the evidence carefully before coming to any conclusion about the existence or non-existence of the creature. Over the years, there have been numerous investigations conducted into the existence of the Beast of Bray Road. These investigations have included scientific analysis, forensic investigations, and field research by cryptozoologists and other experts in the field. Some investigations have focused on collecting physical evidence, such as hair samples, footprints, and scat, although to my knowledge, these types of investigations are generally unsuccessful. Others focused on interviewing eyewitnesses and analyzing their accounts of encounters with the creature. One of the earliest investigations was conducted by Linda Godfrey, who interviewed all the witnesses showcased and is the main source for this video. During her multiple investigations, Linda Godfrey not only interviewed witnesses, she went a step further and contacted officials connected to those eyewitnesses, including Lieutenant Lentz from the local sheriff's department. Lentz confirmed not only one, but two reports of a creature along the side of the road. He confirmed that deputies were sent out to the local 
location but found nothing. Another official Linda Godfrey interviewed was John Fredrickson, animal control officer for Walworth County. This interview convinced Linda this story might have teeth. As she interviewed John Fredrickson, he pulled out a Manila file labeled werewolf. This would catch any journalist's attention and Linda Godfrey was no different. John explained that the file contained reports of a strange animal sighted around Bray and Bowers Road. He admitted that the label was a bit tongue-in-cheek and he didn't believe there was a supernatural creature roaming the back roads of Walworth County. But the fact still remains remained, there was an official report folder labeled Werewolf. Linda and one of the photographers, Terry Mayer, from her newspaper, did conduct a night investigation using a raw store-bought chicken as bait. Linda placed the chicken in a shallow ditch so Terry would be able to get the best images, if the Beast of Bray Road made an appearance. Linda and Terry spent many hours sitting in the car while watching their trap. Unfortunately, the beast didn't make an appearance during their investigation, which led Linda to believe those who go looking for the creature were doomed to failure. This investigation, along with every witness she interviewed, proved an encounter only happened when the individual wasn't actively searching for the creature. In addition to the well-documented interviews and night investigation Linda Godfrey conducted, I did see a glimpse of where some investigators retrieved DNA from hair samples of the Beast of Bray Road. The DNA results suggested that the creature was an unknown canid. I personally didn't find much when it came to documented DNA analysis for this creature. The footprint seemed to confirm the DNA results because they suggest the creature is a large dog or wolf. Investigating a creature like the Beast of Bray Road presents significant difficulties and limitations. For one, the creature is elusive and difficult to track, making it challenging to collect physical evidence or obtain clear photographs or video footage. Additionally, eyewitness accounts can be unreliable reliable as witnesses may be subject to misperceptions, misidentifications, or hoaxes. Finally, the lack of funding and support for cryptozoological research can make it difficult to conduct thorough investigations and follow up on promising leads. Despite these difficulties, there's still significant potential for future investigations and research into the Beast of Bright Road. New technologies and techniques such as genetic analysis and drone surveillance may offer new avenues for collecting evidence and tracking the creature. Additionally, increased public interest and support for zoological research may help attract more funding for investigations into the creature's existence. Ultimately, continued research and investigation may help shed light on the enduring mystery of the Beast of Bray Road and deepen our understanding of the unknown creatures that share our world. The legend of the Beast of Bray Road has a lasting impact on popular culture, inspiring numerous films, books, and TV shows. We'll explore the various ways in which the legend has been referenced and examine its cultural impact. One of the most famous examples is the 2005 horror film The Beast of Bray Road, which is loosely based on the legend. Other examples include appearances in TV shows such as Monsters and Mysteries in America, Expedition X, Monster Quest, and Supernatural and in books such as Linda Godfrey's The Beast of Bray Road, Tailing Wisconsin's Werewolf. One fictional example of the beast in popular culture is the TV series Supernatural. In the episode Heart, the Winchester brothers investigate a string of werewolf attacks in Wisconsin and ultimately discover that the creature responsible is the daughter of a woman who was bitten by the Beast of Bray Road. On the other hand, shows like Expedition X follow the host Josh Gates and his crew as they conduct an investigation investigation by first interviewing witnesses, then by conducting a field investigation that attempted to uncover the beast's true identity. This is only a couple of examples when it comes to the Beast of Bray Road snaking its way through our pop culture. The legend of the beast has a significant impact on the local and cultural landscape of southeastern Wisconsin. The town of Elkhorn, where many of the sightings have taken place, holds an annual festival dedicated to the creature called the Bray Road Beast Festival. Additionally, the legend has attracted tourists and enthusiasts from around the world who come to the area to search for evidence of the creature or attend events related to the legend. The enduring popularity and appeal can be attributed to several factors. For one, the creature is a compelling mystery, drawing in people with a fascination for the unknown and unexplained. Additionally, the creature's appearance and behavior has evolved over time, with new eyewitness accounts and theories adding to its intrigue. 
Finally, the creature's popularity may be due in part to its cultural significance as a symbol of the enduring mysteries and legends of the American Midwest. The impact of the Beast of Bray Road legend on the surrounding community and environment is complex and multifaceted. Additionally, the legend has brought tourism and economic benefits to the area, helping to boost the local economy and raise awareness of the region's natural beauty and cultural heritage. On the other hand, the legend has also been associated with fear and anxiety, particularly among those who live in the areas where sightings have taken place. The legend has the potential to impact the local ecosystem, particularly if the creature is discovered to be a previously unknown species or a type of hybrid animal. Ultimately, it will be up to the surrounding community and experts in the field to balance the potential benefits and risks of the legend and determine how best to approach the ongoing mystery of the Beast of Bray Road. The Midwest region of the United States is rich in myths, legends, and folklore dating back centuries to the time of the Native American tribes. These stories include tales of spirits and ghosts, creatures such as the Wendigo and the Thunderbird, and local legends such as the Michigan Dogman, Hodag, and Ozark Howler. Many of these stories are passed down through oral traditions and have been adapted and changed over time. Let's touch on each of these legends to see if they have any connection to the Beast of Bray Road. The Wendigo is a popular legend of the Plains and Great Lakes Native American tribes. This is a mythological creature or evil spirit, sometimes depicted as a creature with human-like features which possesses individuals. One argument for this creature being supernatural is it's said to invoke feelings of insatiable greed or hunger, with the need to cannibalize other humans and the propensity to commit murder in those that fall under its influence. On a less gruesome note, the Thunderbird is a powerful bird-like creature that is said to control the weather and lightning. According to Native American legend, the Thunderbird is a divine messenger that brings rain and storms to the land. On the other end of the spectrum, the Michigan Dogman is a legend that dates back to 1887 in Wexford County, Michigan. This creature is usually described as a seven-foot-tall, blue or amber-eyed, bipedal canine-like animal with the torso of a man and a fearsome howl that it sounds like a human scream. One interesting aspect of the Michigan Dogman is that it only appears every 10 years and only on years that end in seven. One interesting legend is the Hodag. This is the platypus of the cryptid community. It's an interesting creature because it's considered a fearsome animal resembling a large bullhorned carnivore with a row of thick curved spines down his back. The Hodag was born from the ashes of a cremated oxen as the incarnation of the accumulation of abuse the animals suffered at the hands of their masters. This creature is heavily featured in the Paul Bunyan stories, which is associated with the city of Rhinelander. The last creature I want to touch on is the Ozark Howler. Being an Arkansas native, I've heard about this creature my entire life. This cryptid is said to be a bear-like creature with a gray shaggy coat and is known to dwell in the Ozark Mountains. One reason this creature gets so much traction is because bears are very common throughout the state, especially in the mountainous and forested areas. The myths, legends, and folklore of the Midwest and Mid-South region in terms of Arkansas's Ozark Howler are an important part of its cultural and historical heritage, serving as a means of preserving and transmitting knowledge and values from generation to generation. They reflect the beliefs and experiences of the people who lived in the region, providing insight into the worldview, their relationship with the natural world, and their sense of identity and community. Additionally, these stories are often used to teach important lessons or convey moral messages, serving as a tool for social cohesion and education. There are several connections between the myths, legends, and folklore of the Midwest region and the legend of the Beast of Bray Road. For example, many of the stories involve creatures that are similar to the beast, such as werewolves and other shapeshifters. Additionally, these stories over time may reflect a deep-seated cultural fascination with the unknown and unexplained, which may also be driving interest in the legend. Ultimately, exploring the connection between these stories and the legend of the Beast of Bray Road may shed light on the during appeal and significance of the mysterious creature. 
Cryptozoology is the study of unknown or hidden animals, often referred to as cryptids. The field aims to discover, document, and classify these animals, which are often dismissed as myths or legends by the scientific community. Cryptozoologists use a variety of methods, including field research, eyewitness accounts, and analysis of physical evidence, such as footprints or hair samples, to gather information about these creatures. Cryptozoology has the potential to discover new and unknown creatures, particularly in remote and unexplored areas of the world. Many creatures that were once thought to be mythical or legendary, such as the giant squid or the okapi, have been discovered through scientific investigation. Additionally, new technologies such as DNA analysis and satellite imaging may provide new tools for identifying and studying unknown animals. Cryptozoological research on the Beast of Bray Road may involve a combination of field research and analysis of eyewitness accounts and physical evidence. Researchers may use trail cameras or other remote sensing technology to capture images of the creature or collect hair or other biological samples for analysis. Additionally, researchers may attempt to track the creature's movements or analyze its behavior to gain insight into its biology and ecology. However, as with all cryptozoological research, there are limitations and challenges to studying a creature that hasn't yet been definitively proven to exist, and researchers must be careful to distinguish between fact and speculation in their investigations. Cryptozoology has been met with skepticism and criticism from many in the scientific community, who argue that the field lacks scientific rigor and is based on anecdotal evidence and speculation, rather than imperial data. Some critics argue that cryptozoology is rooted in pseudoscience and even superstition, and that the creatures studied by cryptozoologists are often no more than fanciful creations of the human imagination. While cryptozoology has been criticized for its lack of scientific rigor, there potential validity to the field. As stated earlier, many creatures that were once considered mythical or legendary have been discovered through scientific investigation. Additionally, there are many areas of the world that remain unexplored, and it's possible that new creatures remain to be discovered. However, there are limitations to cryptozoological research, particularly when it comes to studying creatures that have not been definitively proven to exist. Without empirical evidence, it can be difficult to distinguish between fact and speculation and researchers must be careful not to let their own biases or preconceptions cloud their judgment. There are several ethical considerations to take into account when conducting cryptozoological research. One major concern is the potential harm to the creatures being studied, particularly if they are rare or endangered. Researchers must take steps to minimize any potential harm to these animals and ensure that their research doesn't negatively impact their population or habitats. Additionally, there are concerns about the exploitation of local communities or cultures for the purpose of gathering information or resources, particularly in areas where cryptozoological creatures are believed to have cultural and spiritual significance. Finally, there are concerns about the accuracy and reliability of the information gathered through cryptozoological research, and the potential for this information to be misinterpreted or misused. The future of the Beast of Bray Road legend and the creature itself is uncertain. While sightings have decreased in recent years, the legend remains a popular and enduring part of the local folklore and has attracted interest from both the scientific and cultural communities. It's possible that continued sightings or investigations could shed new light on the creature's existence or even lead to its discovery. Alternatively, it's possible that interest in the legend could fade over time as new mysteries capture public attention. Let's dig a little deeper into the implications the continued sightings and investigations of the Beast of Bray Road has on the scientific. From a scientific perspective, the creature's existence could challenge our understanding of the natural world and could potentially open up new avenues of research. From a cultural perspective, continued interest in the legend could have positive effects on the local community, such as increased tourism or cultural recognition. However, there are also potential negative implications, such 
as the exploitation of the legend for commercial gain or the negative impact on the local wildlife population if the creature is found to be real. I'm not sure I agree with this last point simply due to the fact that the creature has been stalking the area for many decades. If the creature's existence was a negative for the local wildlife, there would be at least some signs that the ecological balance was shifting. To my knowledge, this hasn't happened, so I lean more towards this creature being native to the area and an integral part of the ecosystem and not a shock to it. Given its enduring popularity and cultural significance, it's likely that interest in the Beast of Bray Road will continue for the foreseeable future. Continued investigations and research into the creature's existence could attract scientific interest and potentially lead to new discoveries. Additionally, the legend has the potential to continue to captivate the public imagination and inspire new works of art, literature, and media. However, it's important that any interest in the legend is balanced with a respect for the local community and environment, and that any investigations are conducted in an ethical and responsible way. And so, the legend of the Beast of Bray Road lives on. From its humble beginnings as a local legend in rural Wisconsin, to its status as a cultural icon around the world, this mysterious creature has captivated the imagination of countless peoples for decades. As we've seen, the legend of the Beast of Bray Road has been shaped by a variety of factors, from eyewitness accounts and scientific investigations, to cultural references and folklore. While there may never be conclusive evidence of the creature's existence, its legacy will continue to inspire and captivate people for generations to come. I hope that this exploration of the Beast of Bray Road has shed some light on this enduring legend and the world of cryptozoology. I encourage you to continue exploring the mysteries of the natural world and to keep an open mind about the unknown creatures that may still be out there. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the heart of Wisconsin's mysterious werewolf, the Beast of Bray Road. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content on mysterious creatures, legends, and ghost stories. And don't forget to leave a comment below to let me know what you thought of the Beast of Bray Road. If you would like to join the History Unicorn community, we have a Discord server or membership available here on YouTube. If you would like to have real-time access to me and your other community members, the link to our Discord is in the description below. If you would rather stick to YouTube, hit the join button and stay tuned for your shout out. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Stay safe out there. You never know what's lurking just beyond the high beams.